Hey everyone. So today I'm gonna to show you how to rebuild this Salpina supercharger and fix the common problem of oil leaks. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to replace the internal oil seals and install all new seals that are included in this kit. Now in the previous video, I showed you how to service the clutch, replace and press in the clutch bearings. So if you, if you haven't had a chance to see that video, please go ahead and check that out. Today, we're continuing the rebuild process by removing the worn out seals and installing the new ones. Now, just a bit of background. Um, I've been servicing these superchargers since 2014, when my very first B7 developed an oil leak. Back then, I quickly realized that uh, neither BMW, nor Alpina, nor ASA, the manufacturer of these supercharged units, offered any serviceable parts. Fortunately, at the time, I was working as an engineer for a global heavy machinery company, so I was able to leverage my contacts with Tier 1 hydraulic seal suppliers, and I was able to reverse engineer and put together a comprehensive kit, which I've been offering mostly through BMW forums, message boards, and basic word of mouth. Over the years, I've also circulated various written instructions on how to replace the oil seals, but it is difficult to capture all the tips and tricks and best practices in a picture-based format. So recently I've decided to consolidate my efforts and put together a new website, b7stuff.com, where I offer all these serviceable parts which are not offered from BMW or Alpina. I've put together a number of how-to videos to help enthusiasts and owners service their superchargers and keep their cars up and running. So if you have any questions or if you need any serviceable parts for the superchargers, please go ahead and reach out through that website and I'll be happy to help out where I can. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and start rebuilding the supercharger. Okay, so what happens is over time, the seals in the supercharger harden and become brittle due to thermal cycling and cause oil leaks on the exterior of the supercharger. So if you're experiencing any black gunk or grease or oil residue on the outside of your supercharger, then you most likely have bad oil seals. Also, if you have bad oil seals, this can lead to excessive oil from the supercharger entering the engine intake manifold, and this in turn can cause a number of problems with the crankcase ventilation system, or can cause failed CCV valves, which inevitably uh, can lead to high oil consumption, burning oil, or misfiring, or even high carbon deposits. So that's why it's very important to service the supercharger and replace the internal seals as soon as you see any signs of leaks. Now, just a bit of housekeeping. Um, when you remove your supercharger from the vehicle, uh, it will be very dirty. It will be filled with contaminants, oil residue, grease, dirt, sand all over. Um, my recommendation is you take the effort to clean it thoroughly before you start any of the disassembly. You want to clean it with a degreaser. Uh, use something as simple as an old toothbrush to really scrub the exterior of the supercharger. This will help you down the road to prevent any contaminants, oil, dirt, debris, sand, dust from entering into the supercharger as you open it up. And this can only help you with preventing any contaminants from damaging uh, the helical gears inside, the internal seals, as well as the bearing. So please do yourself a favor and clean it thoroughly before you start the teardown process. So we'll start by removing some of the peripherals that are not needed uh, that only get in the way of the rebuild, um, and that includes this uh, pipe, this uh, intake pipe, which is connected to the supercharger with these two fasteners here. So we're going to use a five millimeter hex bit to remove the two bolts that hold it together. There's one. And there's two. So once we remove this, you'll notice we have our very first oil seal that we're gonna be putting aside and replacing it later with a new one that comes in the kit. The other thing that we wanna remove is this spacer near the impeller. And this simply, you simply remove it by lifting it out. And this is where the second oil seal is. And you can remove it with a, with a oil pick, oil seal pick, or something similar, you know, simply pry it open and remove it. So we're going to be replacing that as well. We're going to put this aside. So now we're ready to um, 
open up the supercharger, we're going to start on the back side or on the impeller side. We're going to remove these three uh, fasteners, and these are external Torx, E8 size Torx. So we're going to loosen these. Okay, I'm going to set these aside, and now we're going to turn it on its back. We're going to start counterclockwise. We're going to remove these 10 millimeter hex head bolts. So you'll notice that these bolts are the same length, but the last one that I'm going to remove is going to be shorter. So this one is shorter. That's the reason why I removed them in that order. And just to remind myself that this is the shorter bolt, I'm going to take a Sharpie. and mark this hole so it's easier for me when I put it back together. Now I'm ready to decouple the supercharger, uh, remove uh, the two halves. So in order to do that, you'll notice that there are two pry holes. One is located here and one is located here at the bottom by the inlet. So this is where you can insert two screwdrivers and start by prying open the, the supercharger. But before I do that, I do want to ensure that the clocking of the two halves are set correct when I put everything back together. So for my own reference and for, for ease of access, I'm going to use a Sharpie just to mark a line here so I know that where these two need to mate. There's also a dowel pin that serves the same purpose, um, and I'll show that to you in just a couple of minutes. So now I'm ready to open up the, the supercharger. So in order to do that, one of the things that I like to do is take some masking tape on my screwdrivers and place them onto the tip of the screwdrivers to protect this, the supercharger from any scratches that this, the screwdrivers may leave. Um, I strongly recommend that because the aluminum, the, the supercharger uh, casting is aluminum and you really don't want to scratch it at all. So I try to do whatever I can to ensure that that doesn't happen. So I'm going to remove these, this hardware. I'm going to set this aside, have some more space to work. So I'm going to start by inserting my screwdriver, my covered screwdriver, in one of these slots. One here, one here. And I'm slowly going to start lifting, prying the supercharger. Just a little bit. Like so. Okay. Now you can see it starting to open a little bit. I don't want to go any further than that. Um, what I like to do is I like to take some of the uh, interior trim remover removal tools specifically the plastic ones, because they're non-marring, and start by wedging them in where I can.
like so. I'm going to try to do that on the other side as well. And the idea is to use these plastic tools to help open up the supercharger and not scratch up the surface. Now it is a bit tricky because it does take a little bit of effort and a whole lot of patience to ensure that this is done correctly and more importantly without any damage to the supercharger. So when you do do this, take your time Go little by little, step by step, and try to use as many of these as you have available. And do try to rotate this radially to get as much leverage as you can. So you see now it's starting to come apart. Okay. So once you get about this much open, you can probably set it on the uh, on the clutch, and you can use these tools to simply pry it open, like so, and a bit of rotation every once in a while. And now you removed one of the halves and we can set that aside. Okay. So this supercharger here, as I mentioned, is clean because I've actually cleaned this previously. Um, yours will be covered with oil everywhere due to the bad seals and the leaks. And that's perfectly fine. A couple of things to note here um, on this half. This is where the clutch and the pulley are connected to the this external gear. Sorry, this internal gear. This internal gear has helical cut teeth. And that in turn drives these two gears, smaller gears. Uh, these are um, also obviously helical cut. These are arranged in a parallel axis configuration. And these drive the impeller shaft as shown here that spins through two impeller bearings and rotates the impeller. Here are the two seals for this half, which we're going to remove now. So we're gonna start by taking one of our picks and ever so gently prying the seal, getting a good grip and lifting it off the slot. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that the aluminum, that the supercharger is indeed aluminum. So you want to be very careful not to damage the, the housing. And you just want to grab the seal and pull it out like this. Depending on how many miles you have in your car, these can be very brittle. Uh, this one is actually in fairly good condition. Uh, this has maybe 50, 60,000 miles. Um, so it's actually still fairly compliant and ductile, as you can see here. Most of the times when I do remove these, they are rock hard, they're very brittle. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we'll set this one aside. And we're gonna remove the second seal. Just gently prying it. Oops. It's very easy for these to slip off the pick. And if you're having a hard time getting these onto the pick, um, one thing is, one thing I would recommend is if you take a razor blade and just notch it a little bit or cut it or slice it just a little bit to get a good grip with the pick. But again, be careful not to damage the uh, aluminum because then uh, there will be a scratch and that could prevent the new seal from sitting in.
and um, creating a good oil seal. So now we've removed these two seals. So now um, what we have to do is remove the gear mechanism of the housing that is surrounding the impeller. So let's go ahead and do that. So to remove the impeller housing, we want to be very careful as not to damage the impeller blades. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is as you start wiggling the impeller housing outward, um, you want to make sure that the edges of the housing do not touch the blade and prevent it from rotating. Right now it's rotating freely. If I were to start pulling this open, uh, it there could be a condition where it actually hits one of the impeller blades and gets jammed. You'll know that has happened if you start rotating the impeller and start scratching the, 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 auto, the, uh, the wall or if it gets stuck. So very gently with the same plastic tools, we're gonna apply the same type of pressure by lifting these up at the same time. And again, I'm gonna rotate the impeller just to make sure that I'm not putting any more pressure than I need to on the outside edges of the blades. And it looks like I have a good gap all around. And I think I should be able to just lift this open. And here we go. Now again, this surface is very clean. So one thing that you'll notice now that we remove these two halves, I'm just gonna set this aside, is that we do have a, a, a bore for a hollow dowel pin, which controls the clocking of and the orientation of the two supercharger halves. Um, so we didn't have to mark the, the supercharger with a Sharpie, but I think it serves a, almost a better visual tool because this is kind of easy to overlook and sometimes easy to forget. So that's what that is. We're gonna set this aside. There's really nothing, uh, nothing to do with this half. Uh, what I would recommend is you thoroughly clean this. If there's any oil or gunk or residue uh, just to uh, create a better surface for the air to travel. Now we're going to go back here and focus our attention to the largest seal as shown here. And we're going to remove that seal again with our pick tool. And ever so gently try to lift it up from the groove and remove it. We set that aside. So now we remove the three seals here. Um, what we can do is we can start by removing two more seals that are located that are located uh, by the impeller housing. We're going to remove the two gears, the two helical gears, uh, by removing these two fasteners with a four millimeter hex bit. And now we gently lift these gears and decouple them from the shaft. There's one. And there's two. Okay. So now we are left with this ring uh, that has an additional seal. We have to remove this ring. Uh, but to do that, we have to undo these six small fasteners with a 2.5 millimeter hex bit.
Now that we've removed these uh, fasteners, uh, one thing you'll notice is that from the factory, they come uh, with Loctite applied to them. And this Loctite, once you remove the fastener, is going to leave some, uh, some debris in the housing. And it is very critical for you to clean thoroughly the, any residue and any particles from that dried up, caked Loctite. Uh, thread locker that is there from the factory. So what I like to do is I like to get a q-tip and dip it in some fresh motor oil and go in there and everywhere I see Loctite or a little bit of uh, particles of dart and debris and just simply clean that thoroughly with with a q-tip picking up any leftovers where where there are. The reason I do this is because uh, I find it very important for any parts or particles from that dried out Loctite uh, not to circulate within the oil housing and certainly not find its way into these high precision oil bearings. Uh, sorry, high precision bearings. Uh, these bearings are actually lubricated and, and cooled by the circulating oil and I certainly wouldn't want any of that debris to go inside there and uh, either damage or clog up those bearings, uh, especially given how fast they rotate. Um, so now we're ready to remove the impeller housing. We're ready to press it out from the hub. Uh, to do that, uh, what I like to use is whatever tools are available to me. And we're gonna use a 25 millimeter socket and gently press it onto the outer edge of the housing and gently stop, uh, tap it with a mallet to push out the impeller housing outward and inject both the impeller and the impeller housing. But before we do that, uh, what I strongly recommend is we protect these helical gears. Now these are heat treated, very precision cut helical gears and uh, any little bit of impact from any of the tools could chip or damage them. So I like to protect them by applying a thin layer of masking tape just to cover the, ge the gears and uh, just for a little bit of peace of mind. Okay, so now that these are protected, I can get a 25 millimeter socket or a one inch socket, gently press it, make sure that it's not damaging or hitting the impeller shaft. And I think you can see here that there's adequate clearance. And we're gonna lay this here. I'm gonna hold this with one hand and we're gonna gently tap with a soft mallet. Until it starts coming out. And there we have it. That tapping ejected the impeller housing. And this is where you can see a um, couple of things. You can see one of the oil seals here. You can see an assortment of shims that are added from the factory to account for any tolerancing or any preloading onto the bearings. Uh, those shims either end up on the impeller housing as shown here, or they end up right here um, stuck to this housing as well. So those are one of the two locations where these shims typically end up. Um, here you see the impeller and the impeller nut. Now this is a reverse threaded nut. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that these impellers are actually dynamically balanced from the factory. Um, they are installed and there's etching or marks on both the impeller and the nut to indicate the proper orientation, at which point these are dynamically balanced by removing uh, mass from both the impeller in the form of either milling marks or even hand mach or hand uh, ground markings. Um, and they also remove some material from the nut itself, as you can see here. This is to ensure proper balance of both the impeller and the, uh, the nut as an assembly. These impellers spin at very high RPMs. Uh, so typically Alpinas make um, 500 horsepower at 5,500 RPM with a maximum engine operating RPM of 6,000 uh, 6, RPM. 
The gear ratio on the Alpina Supercharger is 1 to 15, which means um, at 50, anywhere between 5,500 to 6,000 RPM of engine speed, these impellers spin from 83 to 90,000 RPM. So very, very high RPMs, and obviously everything needs to be dynamically balanced very perfectly. And as a result, the bearings in here are uh, very high precision ABEX 7 uh, bearings, which are fairly sophisticated, which again, uh, I do have these offered. Um, and these are also serviceable item, which uh, the, the replacement of which I'll probably document in a different video. But for now, we're gonna focus on the seals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this seal and I'm going to lay this down on the table and get this out of the way. So similarly, we're gonna start by slowly picking at the seal with the tool. Now there's a tighter, tighter tolerance for the seal groove on the impeller housing. So you'll notice this one is going to be a little bit trickier to remove. Uh, oftentimes I end up cutting it or just slightly slicing it with a, with a razor blade. Uh, which is what I've done actually for the purpose of this video to help expedite that. Uh, I've gently sliced it and now that it's sliced I can use it to uh, remove the seal as such. You'll notice this one uh, is more brittle than the rest because there's actually more thermal energy or more heat on the impeller, sh uh, impeller housing side of things. So these t typically tend to be more brittle than the rest of the seals. So we certainly will be replacing that one as well. The next seal that we have is, uh, I'm gonna set this aside, is back onto this housing and it is located on this ring. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift and pull this ring out like so. You'll notice there's some additional shims here as well. Again, to account for any tolerancing in the machining of this housing as well as the ring. So we're gonna leave these where they are. And it's important to keep these shims, obviously, because that's how they came from the factory. So there is a seal here that we're gonna remove uh, similarly with the pick. This one I've also found to be rather challenging to remove sometimes. So I'm gonna do my best to use this tool and pick it. Sometimes it takes a different assortment of tools to get the job done. And there we go. It snapped because again, it is brittle. And to illustrate that, you'll see how it, it fell apart in my hand. That's because there's more heat on the impeller housing than there is on the uh, perimeter or the externals of the supercharger, which, which makes sense. So now we're gonna discard this old seal. You can see it's fallen apart and we are ready to replace um, and install the new seals. So let's go ahead and get those out. So we're gonna take our brand new supercharger oil seal kit and remove the contents. So here you'll find nine brand new oil seals as well as the correct uh, Loctite 243 thread locker that Alpina recommends, and an all new hardware kit, uh, why I'll talk about in just a second. So we can set these seals aside and kind of see what we have available to us. Uh, they're all different sizes. Uh, two are, uh, these two are obviously identical. Uh, we have a large, the largest seal that goes around the perimeter of this piece, and we have these two that go right here. So let's go ahead and start installing these. So we'll start with the, the, the middle housing plate. So in order to install the seals, uh, we want to take a little bit of oil and pre-lubricate the seals. It'll help with both sealing as well as installation. So we're simply going to slide this over the housing and let it sit smoothly in the groove. We're going to do the same for the second one. Just gently going to lubricate the seals all around. And this is no different to installing a 
an o-ring for an oil filter housing or other 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 seals okay so now i'm going to take additional oil and kind of pre-lubricate this because this will help with installation as it goes into the the housing i'm going to do the same thing here for the larger seal i'm going to pre-lubricate it with oil and i'm going to apply it on the outside like so okay so now we have three seals in i'm going to lubricate a little bit more So now we're going to set this aside. Now we can focus our attention to the impeller housing. For the impeller housing, um, we can simply visually determine which one of these seals would fit. And visually you can tell that this is the correct seal. This one seems to be a little bit too big. It's fairly obvious, uh, which means that this seal is going to go on the ring. And this seal is going to go on the impeller housing. So I'm going to pre-lubricate my fingers and the oil seal and install that here. Just being mindful of that shim. Okay, so now that's fully seated, just going to lubricate it around just a little bit more. And now I'm going to do the same for this seal onto the, the ring or the securing plate for the impeller housing, like so. Okay, so now I'm going to put this um, securing plate or ring, as I like to call it, back onto the housing. I'm just going to gently press here. Try to be as even as you possibly can not to pinch or damage the uh, the seal until you feel like it's fully seated in the cavity now don't worry about the clocking at this at this time we're going to adjust that with some pliers so now that's this is fully seated in now what we have to do is put the impeller housing back into this cavity so i'm going to take that shim so i don't lose it i'm going to return it back to where it was And now we're ready to put the impeller housing back into this bore. So what I found to be helpful is if we elevate this plate and use and, and use the advantage of elevation to tap in the uh, impeller housing so that it, the bottom of the shaft does not bottom out and hit the table. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, two aluminum blocks that I have and I'm going to cover them with a soft rag to prevent any damage to the supercharger plate. I'm going to place the supercharger plate onto the blocks. Okay, so now we have a little bit of elevation so that as we press in this impeller housing, the edge of the shaft does not hit the table. So what I'd like to do again is to pre-lube everything to ensure a smoother installation. I'm going to pre-lube again, just add some more oil to the, uh, to the seal. I'm going to add some oil to the inside bore. Nice and generous. And now we're going to put that back in. One thing to keep in mind is very, it's a very tight fit. It's a very, uh, it's rather precision machined. Um, so you really want to make sure that the impeller housing is as concentric as you can make it uh, as it goes right in. So this looks pretty good, came right in. And now it's a matter of either pressing it in if you can, or what I like to do is like to take my mallet and gently tap it in.
like so until it's fully seated. And that's that. Obviously, you want to be careful not to damage the impeller edges or the blades. Uh, so be very cognizant of that. Uh, don't use a hammer. Use a very soft mallet to gently tap it. Uh, it's better to do multiple small taps than one or two or few large heavy taps. So this is it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around. And you'll notice that the bolt holes do not align with the holes on the ring. So what I like to do is uh, take the larger set of needle nose pliers that you have. And the larger the better because the larger the opening, the less chance that um, the pliers themselves would, would hit and damage the impeller. And there are these two holes, um, non-counterboard holes on the ring that you can use to stick your blade, to stick the, um, the pliers in and just gently rotate and adjust the clocking so that the through holes of this plate match the threaded holes on the bore. So now that I've adjusted it, I can go ahead and put the fasteners back in. Now, when it comes to reusing these fasteners, uh, you can certainly reuse them. They're not damaged or, or uh, stretched by any means. Um, but what you do need to do is clean out the factory thread locker that's on them. Now, this can be rather challenging and difficult and certainly cumbersome. Um, for illustration purposes, uh, in this small fastener, I actually let it sit overnight in a, a strong solvent and I scraped it and uh, scrubbed it vigorously with a stainless steel brush and I'm still not able to get some of this thread locker off. Um, so to save you the trouble of having to clean these, these, these fasteners, what I'm including in, this, in the oil seal kit is a, is a brand new hardware kit which is uh, clean and uh, easy to use. You just uh, re-replace the old ones with this. It'll save you the time and effort of cleaning these and having to reuse them. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall these eight fasteners. Uh, but first I need to get some of that thread locker. Now that I have my thread locker, I'm gonna take the hardware from the kit and I'm going to apply a small amount of th thread locker onto each fastener. Like so. And fasten them back in. Okay. And I'm gonna do that in a crisscross pattern for all of the six fasteners. So I went ahead and applied the thread locker onto the remaining fasteners and I installed them uh, for the sake of um, simplifying the process and speeding up the video. Um, I tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Uh, the torque spec for these bolts is 1.5 newton meters, which is very small. I don't have a micro torque wrench available to me right now, but what it so what I do like to do is tighten these by hand, uh, just kind of snug until I feel like they are they're firmly set and secure. Uh, the purpose of this ring really isn't to provide any excessive clamping load. It is just to hold the, the ring in place and inherently hold the seal in place. So you really don't need to over tighten them, which is why they're tiny little fasteners from the factory. The next, th the next thing we're going to do is install the two uh, helical gears. So to do that, we're going to remove this protective um, tape. Like so. And then we're ready to install these gears. We'll do one by one. Kind of gently pressing it in. I'm going to do the other one. Ensuring that they are concentric, which really helps with the installation. Okay, so now we can um, 
install these fasteners again we're going to use a four millimeter hex bit and we're going to apply some blue loctite like so And now the torque spec for these two fasteners is seven Newton meters. And that's exactly what I have this torque wrench preset for. So now we're gonna to torque these down. And the second one, that's it. So now these are torqued to seven Newton meters per the factory recommendation. So now we're ready to install this back uh, into the housing. So to do that, let's clear this up a little bit. I'm going to remove these blocks, put them aside for now. And I'm going to take the uh, one half of the supercharger, lay it flat. And now we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinstall so that the gears mesh together. One thing to keep in mind is the location of the uh, large hole to indicate the dowel pin. Um, it can get kind of confusing at times, um, easier to overlook, which is why I'm going to rely on the marking that we have on the housing right here to align with the marking on the housing. Let's see, where is it? Right here. So I know that this needs to go like, like this. So I'm going to preserve that orientation. And I'm going to try to make this as concentric as I can possibly align it. Okay, it takes a little bit of finagling. And then you want to align these these holes. I do like to put a fastener sometimes just to help me with that alignment. And now this is fully aligned, fully seated. And now what I'm going to do is try to tap this in because right now there's still a gap between the two halves and I need to seal this. You also want to make sure that at this point the impeller should, the, the um, internal gear should engage the two helical gears uh, you can and the impeller should rotate the pulley and the clutch which it does so that means that it, they are seated fairly well so now we're going to tap this in and to do that i'm going to go back to my blocks and use them as leverage like so now, if you don't have aluminum blocks, um, any piece of wood or two by four works just as well. The one thing I would recommend is that you use some sort of rag or cloth just to protect the, um, the supercharger, especially if you're using metal or aluminum like I am. Okay, so this is, I feel happy with this. This is fairly stable. Um, now, all I have to do is tap uh, in a crisscross pattern to kind of seat this and have this bottom down. So I'm going to use the softer side of my soft mallet and just gently start tapping. In a crisscross pattern. Every once in a while I want to check that the impeller uh, can spin freely. And that's it. There you have it. I can feel it's fully seated. I can, I can feel that it's bottomed out. Now that that's fully seated in, we can take that dowel pin and put it back to where it was. 
And now it's time to reinstall the impeller housing half. So we want to align the larger bore with a dowel pin, like so. And I'll, this is probably the most um, stressful part for me because this is um, the part that is perhaps more susceptible, the most susceptible to damage, and that is ensuring that the this housing um, is installed correctly without touching or damaging the impeller blades. And this can be very tricky sometimes, especially with a new seal. So what you want to do is you, you want to allow, align the dowel pin and align the housing concent concentrically as such, such that it is actually not touching the impeller blade. Well, what I like to do is every once in a while, I spin the impeller blade to make sure that it's not jammed or it's not stuck. Like right now, I'm touching it ever so gently to illustrate that I cannot spin the impeller because the impeller is stuck, it's wedged. Um, it is stuck uh, here because of the interference. So you wanna remove and wiggle the housing ever so slightly to uh, prevent contact so that you can spin the impeller by hand. So now that you have it lined up, you wanna make sure all your holes are lined up. Sometimes it helps if you're a little bit off, it helps if you put one or two bolts just to get things started. And again, you wanna take your mallet and just gently start tapping in a crisscross pattern. To get this going and get this seated. Again, being cognizant that there is no contact of the walls of the supercharger uh, housing with the impeller blades. In this case, there isn't any. That's it. And you'll notice as you start tapping, uh, you'll notice a change in pitch indicating that the supercharger has sandwiched itself together and it's fully seated. And that's pretty much it. Uh, all we're left to do now is to reinstall the fasteners. I have one started already. And I'm going to reinstall the remaining fasteners. And again, these bottom ones are external Torx fasteners. And when reinstalling these fasteners, I prefer not to use my, my power wrench uh, because it doesn't give me a good feel. I, we are screwing into the aluminum, so we want to make sure not to over torque it, which is very easy to do, especially for a M6 fastener. And we want to gently just uh, tighten these by hand. And now we're going to flip this over. At this point, we don't need these blocks anymore. And now we're gonna continue reinstalling the uh, remaining fasteners. So remember how we had this marked for the shortest bolt? That would be this one. So we'll start with that one. Screw, we'll screw this in all the way by hand. And then we'll reinstall the remaining fasteners. So now I'm going to tighten all of these by hand. Okay, so now that these are tight, I am going to torque these to spec. Alpina calls for nine Newton meters for all these fasteners. So that's what we're gonna do in a, in a crisscross manner. So 
we're going to go little by little until we tighten these. Now we're going to switch between going back and forth to the front side and the back side, just to ensure uniform distribution of clamping load. Okay, so this one is good. And the last three. And that's it. These are all tight to nine Newton meters. So now that these are all tight, we're going to remove these two oil seals that connect the supercharger to the engine block. We're gonna take our pick and again, gently try to pry and remove these seals. Keeping in mind, being careful not to scratch the uh, aluminum. And again, this does take a little bit of effort sometimes, depending on the condition of the seals and how dry and hardened these are. This one's a little bit stubborn. So it's good to have two tools handy just in case. Okay. So now we're going to replace those two with two brand new ones that came in our kit. Again, we're going to lubricate these before installing them. And then just before installing the supercharger back onto the vehicle, I would lubricate these again, just to ensure that there is enough oil and lubrication for a easy installation. I would also lubricate the, the inside walls where these uh, two nipples go into. Now we're ready to reinstall our spacer that goes on the impeller. Uh, for that, we take one of the seals from the kit, the one that the, the few remaining, and we simply install it here. There's really no need to lubricate this one, although by the time you come to this point, you'll have enough lubrication to help seat this and seal this nicely. So this just drops right in, like so. And now we're ready to reinstall the the intake tube or pipe. There is one last seal here. This one, again, doesn't really need to be lubricated much. Just whatever oil you have on your hands or gloves is perfectly fine. We'll lay this here. And we want to re remember the orientation of the pipe as it, as it sits on the vehicle. Actually goes like this with this opening facing the, the, the pulley. And we're going to reinstall the two fasteners here. one and 
As I mentioned, I like to tighten these by hand so I can get a good feel of where I am, how tight I'm going, and not to over tighten this. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten these and torque them down to the same 9 newton meters that Alpina calls for. That's 9. Okay. And that's it. So there you have it. We replaced the oil seals. Everything is nice and tightened and torqued to spec according to Alpina and ASA. So this supercharger is now ready to go back into the vehicle. So that's it for the video. If you found this useful and helpful, um, I'd, appreci I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, or inquiries, or if you need any uh, serviceable parts like the clutch bearings, impeller bearings, the oil seal kit, feel free to reach out through b7stuff.com. I'd be happy to answer any questions, or if I can help you, point you at least in the right direction. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.